All right, hello everyone. If you've ever wondered where spiders came from and what their closest relatives are, then you've come to the right place because today I want to help make that clearer for everyone. Spiders are a really fascinating animal. They are my favorite animal, as many of you guys might know. And so I find this topic fascinating. I hope you'll join me in this video today so that you can, uh, uh, so that I can share my fascination with you, right? Now, the way I want to go about explaining the spider origins and the relatives is through taxonomy. I know taxonomy is about classification, but it actually fits hand in hand with understanding where certain lineages diverged from and also which animals are cl more closely related to each other. And that's because of the nature of this taxonomy system in Linnaean taxonomy, where we work from classes that are, or categories that are very, very broad, and we start getting narrower and narrower as we go down. So we're going to be aiming for the order here. Um, that's the category that we're aiming for. Why? Because we're looking for the order Araniae. In Latin terms of Linnaean taxonomy, Araniae is basically synonymous with spiders. If you're looking at a spider, it's in the order Araniae. If you're looking at any animal that isn't a spider, it is in a completely different order. <clears throat> but we're going to start all the way up at the top today with the domain Eukaryota. Every animal that we know of is a eukaryote. In fact, every complex multicellular organism is going to be a eukaryote here. That's not too exciting. But when it comes to the kingdom, we fall within the animal kingdom. Now this is going to tell you that you're not a fungus, you're not a plant, and you're not a bacteria. But the animal kingdom is very, very diverse. We have all sorts of different animals who have been evolving for hundreds of millions of years, and don't, some of them don't look anything like each other. So we're going to need to get a lot narrower if we're going to find the groups that spiders are related to. And the very first big leap, I think, is going to start with a phylum. With a, uh, the phylum of the spiders, where they belong, is called Arthropoda. And this is one of the coolest phylums in the world. So, what is an arthropod? In my humble opinion, when arthropods diverged from the rest of the animal kingdom, that was the first massive step that the ancestors of spiders took to be able to uh, eventually come across the body and the abilities of the spiders we know today. And that's because arthropods were the first animals to develop exoskeletons, which are really hard body coverings, and jointed appendages. And this is going to stay consistent with arthropods all the way up till modern times. But when arthropods first came into view, it first uh, emerged in the animal kingdom, we're talking well over 500 million years ago. And some of the earliest arthropods were these trilobites that we see on the screen here. Now, unfortunately, all trilobites are now extinct, but they were alive and very dominant for a really, really long time, well over 100 million years. And they deserve a lot of credit. Also, these are some of the most commonly fossilized animals from the earliest time periods of the animal kingdom. And the reason for that is exactly because of their exoskeleton because they're so hard their skin is so tough that they fossilize way easier than more soft-bodied animals that shared the ocean landscapes at the time uh, one thing i want to touch up on about the exoskeleton is that all arthropods have to molt. The exoskeleton's like a suit of armor, right? A suit of armor doesn't grow. So if an animal wants to get bigger, it has to shed its old skin. And after it's done, for a little while, it is more pasty and white and squishy. And as before its skin hardens, it has a little bit of time to use that energy it's stored up from its food to get a little bit bigger. And then its skin will harden up and time is up. No more getting bigger. Now we have to wait to gather more energy until we molt yet again. So all arthropods have to do it. 
Here we see three completely different ones, all sharing the same task of having to shed their old skin. Arthropoda today, now that the trilobites are extinct, is practically made up of four main representatives, but they are some of the coolest and most widespread animals on the planet. We've got the crustaceans, right? The crabs, the shrimp, the lobsters. We've also got the arachnids, or the chalicerates, uh, most of which are arachnids. And uh, these are some of the eight-legged fellows. This is the group where the spiders are found. <clears throat> the hexapods, most of which are insects, these are six-legged six arthropods with two pairs of antennae, uh, three tagmata, or body segments, and they usually have wings. And, of course, the myriapods, who have oftentimes way too many legs to count. These are going to be our millipedes and centipedes. And these four groups, they are so numerous that they make up well over three quarters of all of the species in the world today, with the insects in particular doing a lot of heavy lifting here. But we are interested in the arachnids here. Because that is exactly the next step in the the taxonomy chart. Under phylum you have class and the class that the spiders belong to is arachnida. So what is an arachnid? Well there's a couple different types of arachnids but they mostly share these characteristics. They have m most of them have ten appendages but only eight of them are legs. Two of them are front-facing appendages that actually usually aid in feeding and they're called pedipalps. And different arachnids chose different things to do with their pedipalps as they evolved. And it's really, really fascinating. For example, spiders have barely visible uh, pedipalps, other than some mygalomorphs like tarantulas. But they look like miniature legs. On the scorpion side, it's very different. Scorpion pedipalps almost look like arms with pincers on the side. Uh, speaking of pincers, their mouth parts are called chelicerae. And... Chelicerae evolved as feeding mouth parts before teeth ever evolved in the animal kingdom. And usually, chelicerae look like little pincers, but they're tiny and where the mouth is. And they're used for tearing up food and bringing it to the orifice that is the mouth. Uh, spiders are actually going to be an exception of this because they their chelicerae has evo have evolved to be more fang-like, not so much like pincers anymore. And of course, arachnids have two tagmata, uh, two main body parts, an opisthosoma and a prosoma. This differentiates them from insects who have three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. All right. So there aren't that many arachnids. You're they're going to find groups of between 10 and 15, depending on who you ask. Uh, there are some... Uh, throughout the years, there are some groups that scientists will eventually realize they thought it was one group, but actually they were two. There are some groups that people thought maybe they weren't arachnids, but some molecular uh, DNA analysis shows actually they probably are arachnids. And so it's not really fixed, and I'm not going to go over all of them today, but I am going to go over most, and it's most of the ones that we can interact with, either because they are parasitic or because they are pretty big when it comes to the arachnid world. So for example, we can start here with the pseudoscorpion, an arachnid that I'm sure most people aren't familiar with, but they actually exist all over the place. They have a bunch of different species. They're just like scorpions, but they don't have tails, and they're really small, and they basically they, they live in the soil, and they hunt other small animals that live in the soil. Here we have the true scorpions, which of course can grow much, much bigger than the pseudoscorpions, and they have that famous venomous tail. Both of these creatures have claws for pedipalps. Here we have the camel spiders or sun spiders, the sullifugids. These guys are really cool. They're not venomous, they can run really fast, and their chelicerae are almost like saws. They're pincer-like, but they're huge, and they're front-facing, and they're really good at tearing stuff apart. Here we have the mites, who are also arachnids. Mites are usually small, some of them are downright microscopic, in fact there are many of them in my room right now, as they are probably in yours. Dust mites are everywhere, they're, they even live on our skin. Uh, yeah, they're some of the smallest arachnids that we're going to come across. 
Here we have an amblypigid, a whip spider, or sometimes called a tailless whip scorpion. These guys are cool because their pedipalps are also like arms that are spiked, and they're there to make sure their prey doesn't run away. They are also not venomous, but their first two pair of legs turned into antennae formed legs, so they're not used for walking anymore, they're sensory organs, much like the antennae you'll find on, a, on an insect. Of course, ticks are also arachnids. Not my favorite arachnids, I've got to say. I'm not a fan of parasites, but they are here. They are relatives. And here we have a member of the Opilionis uh, order. Uh, this is a harvestman, sometimes called a daddy longlegs. This is commonly thought to be a spider. It is not a true spider. These guys don't have venom, and they don't spin silk. This is a whip scorpion not to be confused with the whip spider. Uh, it is often called a vinegaroon because it can actually spray a liquid that is practically vinegar, acetic acid, uh, and it's used for defense. Just like the amblypigids, like the whip spiders, they have their first two pair of legs has transformed into sensory organs, these feeling legs. So they're not used for walking anymore, they're used for sensing their surroundings. A common theme among most arachnids is that their eyesight is really, really bad. So a lot of them have come up with some clever strategies to be able to see a little better. And then finally, we have the spiders. And of course, this is what we're after today. Because this is what I think the coolest arachnid is. So we made it all the way down to the order, Aranye. This is where the spiders are found. So we learned a lot about where they came from, how long ago they, they diverged from the rest of the animal kingdom, uh, what were what those characteristics were that made them so successful to last all of these hundreds of millions of years And we met up uh, a lot of their cousins, too, which is really cool So spiders, how are they different than the other arachnids? Well Like I explained before their chalicery their their mouth parts their little teeth, right? They're fang shaped They're not little tiny mouth pincers. They're actual fangs like something you would find on a mammal almost except these fangs are hollow and they connect to their venom glands. Practically every spider that you're going to come across is going to have venom. There is one family that has some exceptions, but for the most part, all spiders are venomous. And all spiders also spin silk. They have spinnerets that connect to their silk glands that is found on their abdomen or epistosoma. And this is a characteristic that's pretty unique to spiders in the arachnid realm, at least. And even though other animals in the world can spin silk, spiders are by far the best at it, as their silk is extremely tough and very, very versatile. So, some of you might be wondering, well, what's up with the other three categories? Well, a spider itself is not an exact species of animal, right? You can have a lot of different types of spiders, and that's what these categories are for. It's for differentiating between each types of spiders and getting so specific until you reach the exact species that you're looking for. Now there are so many spider families out there and each one can have dozens, sometimes dozens and dozens of uh, genera and sometimes even hundreds of species. And here on the screen are just some of those spiders. Starting from the top left, the crab spider family, over to the right, we have the net-casting spider family, the jumping spider family, the uh, orb weaver family, the huntsman family, and the wolf spider family. These are just some of the many, many different um, categorized families of spiders that all have different origins. Sorry, they're all different enough from each other that they form completely different groups. And in each one of these families, there can be hundreds of different species. As of today, there are over 50,000 recognized spider species in the world, so going trying to go over all of them would be quite a task. But I hope you appreciate how cool it is that spiders are related to such other cool animals, uh, either distantly or closely, depending on where it's found on that uh, taxonomy chart, right? Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. I'm really glad you... We're able to stay until the end for those who were and uh, i'm hoping to bring more content like this soon so please don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe to this channel because there is more spider and general invertebrate content coming your way thanks again catch you later